In today's episode, I'll play the black sheep and create this behemoth that will really rake in the cash. Even though I didn't specifically focus on developing the economy of this country, I concentrated more on the military aspect and achieving two accomplishments for Chara Koyunlu. Hello imperialists, here's Lucas. In this episode, I'll dub this country the Black Sheep, a tribal federation with a unique governance system that gives us some bonuses and access to modern societal states, not just tribes. Regarding societal states, our emirate status will snag a special privilege reflecting the historical situation in the Baghdad region and basically all of Mesopotamia. There was a powerful emir of Baghdad back then, yielding substantial influence which translates into high autonomy in the game. No, don't decrease it at the beginning. This emir is about to kick the bucket. The black sheep also got a massive new mission tree, much more interesting than the original. Interestingly, it's designed to limit our conquests for the next two to five years. The conditions for completing both this mission and another mean that a few years must pass. You can also try your luck with the Prince of Persia mission, but it all depends on how long the current ruler of will live. So yeah, this country needs a bit of luck initially or some mission tree sidestepping. As I mentioned earlier, you can also achieve this feat and it's generally better to tackle it separately since our diplomats will be busy. First guarantee Ramazan's independence, then naturally improve relations. Soon after, the country will form an alliance with you. Then go for the royal marriage and the achievement is yours. Just remember to break the alliance with them later if you want to continue this playthrough. It's not worth holding on to. So you snag an effortlessly obtainable achievement, but Unfortunately, pursuing it means you'll lack one diplomat to do some essential things for a swift black sheep expansion. That's why I won't be doing it this time, I'll focus on the expansion instead. Our country's ideas are also intriguing, focusing on cavalry development with bonuses for both conquests and more importantly, the stability of our nation. We're probably the only country with heretic tolerance in our ideas, a unique trait among Islamic nations, as Islam's various branches usually don't tolerate each other much. We, however, are Shiites, the more martial side of Islam and I'll likely aim to convert Sunni provinces anyway. We have access to various Islamic scholars and honestly, the one for aggressive expansion, province development or shock damage will be crucial for me, especially if we engage in an early war with the Ottoman Empire. But let's delve into our societal stats. At the beginning, I won't distribute too many privileges because as I mentioned, I plan on many wars from the start. Dahimi has a lot of influence, so I need to be careful. I'll only distribute privileges and of course loans because I'll soon be hunting for a cheaper advisor. Administrative, preferably. If you don't find one, I might consider restarting the campaign. We'll need a lot of these points, and we can't afford to establish our national focus on administrative points alone. Military points will also be crucial. We have a hopeless heir, and we want to get rid of him. Since I don't need to quickly ally with Ramazan and don't have to insult its rivals, I don't need to save prestige points. If I wanted to pursue an achievement related to Ramazan, I would start buttering up to the heir only after some time. Of course, we're snatching land for the crown. Additionally, our societal states have tasked us with converting provinces We'll have a cheaper advisor with conversion powers, which is pretty sweet. Let's nail this mission pronto. Here, I'm retracting the initial conversion, triggering the appropriate edict for faster conversion in the Mosul region and converting that province in 38 months. Great. We're also starting with negative Pajeti, reducing our idea costs, boosting morale, and cranking up missionary strength. Cool beans! Let's use the national decision for forced religious unity to speed up province conversions even more. For now, I don't want to increase stability because that leads us toward legalism. And I want to snag that post our ruler's demise. The black sheep's rivals, no doubt, are Akkoyunlu, Ajam, and Mamluks. Alternatively, instead of Mamluks, initially, we could go for Georgia, which is also lucrative. Definitely Ajam, perhaps Georgia, and the white sheep. Speaking of the white sheep, it's interesting because they can easily ally with the Ottoman Empire at the start. Actually, since we're on the topic of the white sheep, question for you. Do you want an episode on this country? I'll bag a few achievements in the process, 500 likes after this episode and I'll do it as the campaign should differ significantly from the black sheeps. And hey, why not repay all our loans to avoid lurking in the red? We can scale down the army for now, turn off all our forts too. We'll probably need a year to stake a few territorial claims because I'm planning to ignore my mission tree. I'm claiming Shirvan, claiming Ajam and claiming the white sheep, not scouting for allies because let's face it, we're called the black sheep for a reason and practically no one's a fan. That's 
because we're a Shia country, surrounded by Sunni neighbors. Joking aside, you could try an alliance with Bahmanis, however, you shouldn't need it. Now, back to our mission tree. Check it out, they're really cool, granting us lots of claims, reducing province war score costs and so on. They allow us to ditch that dreadful autonomy boosting privilege or, in the case of the Prince of Persia, boost our army morale and get claims for the entire Persian region. But they're designed in a way that there's no chance of completing them quickly. Look at this, 190 loyalty with our vassals, one has 30, another has 10 or even less now. This makes it seriously tough for us. To fulfill the mission of the emirs of Mesopotamia, we need a specific event with an expected trigger time of about 5 years. It could be shorter, it could be longer. Alternatively, we can meet the second condition, 40% crown lands, but that's again over 5 years. The quickest route might be heading towards the Prince of Persia, because honestly, it sometimes happens that the Sultan of Timurid kicks the bucket within the first month, and then we're golden. But it might not happen, and we might have to wait for another 5 years. That's why I decided to ignore the mission. We'll grab those bonuses some other time. For the black sheep, the key is snagging that slice of the Persian region because it significantly boosts our share in the Persian trade. We can move our capital there, develop the province, and we've got silk and coal. Plus, it's grasslands, meaning cheap province development. Yes, a storm is brewing over the Timurid Empire, death of Ispent Mirza, dark tidings have arrived from the heart of Mesopotamia. Ispent Mirza, the brother of our lord Jahan Shah and the emir of Baghdad, has met his final fate, departing this earthly kingdom. The rich and strategic region is now to be handed over to his son, Fulad Mirza. Following local customs and traditions, however, our sovereign Jahan Shah envisions a centralized kingdom. Now we can decide to bring the entire region of Baghdad under our rule, triggering a small rebellion, a tiny civil war you could say. Alternatively, we could strategically act and strip the emirs of their privileges, precisely by executing this mission in another way. Snatch land for the crown and so on at a later stage. Currently, I want to grab it for myself as quickly as possible. So let's pull back our troops, activate army maintenance, recruit a general, surprisingly a decent one. And luckily, the rebel leader isn't a better ruler than our sovereign, so we don't want to let them win, right? Hence, here in southern Mesopotamia, we're smashing their well-led armies. How on earth did I win this? Unfortunately for us, us, many of our potential targets have formed strong alliances. Whether you mark these countries as your rivals or not, I don't know, they always form mutual alliances, so it's tough. Let's recall our diplomats and send them to improve relations with our vassals. We're preparing for war shortly. Alternatively, a good move might be to attack, for example, Georgia now and make it our vassal. But that can wait. For now, let's focus on gaining technological advantage, and then we'll attack those countries. And see what happened after this event with the death of the Emir of Baghdad. Autonomy has been practically reset everywhere. Well, almost everywhere. We have a cheap administrative advisor who is also an inquisitor, so I'm definitely hiring him. And I'm setting automatic conversion of our provinces. Let it go one by one and convert provinces. Oh, how nice, free money. Because now we're doing this thing, taking money for corruption and reducing it with this event. Oh, ho, ho, ho. we have an opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, and a really good one. We'll attack Ardabil and call its ally to war, as well as Mushasha. Remember how we fought on those forts before? And for now, we'll leave a thousand troops here so that our opponent can't recruit larger armies. Additionally, we have another bonus, if you can call it that. Ajam attacked Ardabil. Finally, the ruler of Timurids dies. And I forgot to make claims against Ajam, idiot. Before wrapping up our wars, we need to secure a scholar reducing aggressive expansion. Or a learned one, essentially. Yes, it should be translated as a scholar, not a prophet, no matter. And I'll go for reduced aggressive expansion. Don't forget that you still have to invite him to your court. I often forget about that. A great year, so much. Don't be tempted to advance in administrative technology. Take military. Fulfill the mission to become the Prince of Persia. Remember, always territorial claims. The these are permanent, so they're even better. They reduce the costs of annexing provinces after conquest into our empire. But the additional morale from the mission is also very cool. And now, is it worth occupying a strategic place in this province? No, not worth it. Because here, we'll make a vassal. Here, we'll make a vassal. But it's worth checking who Ajam really attacked. And they attacked Ardabil. Because it always means the first shield. Whether as an attacker or defender, it means the first country engaged in it and leading the war. So Ardabil must be our vassal vassal. We're conquering Mushash for ourselves and Ardabil will become our vassal. Which, attention, this puts us in a state of war with Ajam and it's just Ajam, no need to bother his allies, which suits us just fine. These conquests have given us a little over 4% crown land. Did I accidentally consolidate my army? Oops! This will be a tougher war so I'll recruit a grand company of mercenaries.
mercenaries now, and thanks to this we've fulfilled the agenda for the emirs, giving us a pretty decent commander when it comes to besieging provinces. I'm thrilled about that because Ajam has two fortresses. Well, technically, one fortress we need to conquer and one capital. Let's exploit the fact that Ajam's troops move towards our capital. And right now, as you see, I'm striking at theirs too. Remember, our capital is a mountain fortress, giving us a colossal advantage over the enemy. And we're just crushing them, crushing them without much trouble. Although I didn't inflict as much damage as I hoped, but it allows us to continue our conquests. And let's immediately make territorial claims, definitely not to Biapas, to Mazadaran. For now, Ajam's troops are still outmatched, although they're quickly capturing my fortresses. No surprise there, they have a commander with three points for besieging fortresses. Oh, and remember the loyalty mechanics of tribes, because I totally forgot about it. After each victorious battle, you'll gain loyalty from tribes, and it's worth acquiring bonuses with that loyalty, as you see here. Oh look, here's a little horse, informing you that you can spend 30 points on some bonuses. We have the opportunity to build a certain mausoleum, and honestly, I want those bonuses because they last throughout the game. The war with Ajem ends like this. I don't break any of their alliances because, well, it's not worth it. No guy is a straightforward country to defeat, but we're gaining the following provinces, especially that fortress, which is very, very tiresome to capture. Coalition-wise, no major country is in it yet, so we take as much as we can. We reduce war exhaustion, and then core the provinces. As for stability, honestly, I'm not increasing it yet because our country will often be under occupation, so there's no point in increasing prosperity. Oh, and I have an opportunity, maybe I can support the independence of Transoxiana, so we need to improve relations with them now to make them like us. It's crucial for us because it allows us to fulfill this mission with an extra bonus, and as you can see, reduced aggressive expansion. Oh, I also got permanent territorial claims on Mazaradan, how nice! Okay, let's attack right away. No, because first we need to deal with our estates or actually take back the land, quell the rebellions that will arise. But really, at this moment, we can already distribute privileges. And these currently look more or less like this. Nothing special. Very important. In this war, we need to repay all our 4% loans and as many 1% ones as possible. Great, one is left? Well, two, idiot. But okay, let's demolish this fortress because it won't do us any good. We can get rid of this one too because here we have a mountain in the meantime. And here, after capturing it, it's worth leaving only one of them. So let's demolish this one because on this smaller mountain, we get a minus one to rolls and on this one, we get a minus two. In the end, I'll add the mash rig culture to the acceptable ones. It will be more stable, richer, and now everywhere. I'm also reducing autonomy. I know it's a bit too much after these conquests, but things went a bit differently than I planned. Our conquests, so now I'll have to have autonomy everywhere and suppress rebellions. Well, here we can now take advantage of our special form of governance and, for example, add a combat bonus for our cavalry. Alternatively, ask for six cavalry units. Mind you, check this out. Here's a trick you can pull off. We grab this bonus, get six cavalry units, but cancel their recruitment, which gives us manpower. Our country is already quite big, so so tribal support drops rather quickly, it's worth spending it regularly. Hey, and I see I might have a chance for an alliance with the Ottoman Empire. So, in a moment, we'll send a diplomat to them. Now let's attack Mazadaran. I forgot to take the privilege, of course, the most important one for me, namely Strong Duchess, because I have a ton of vassals. I'm conquering Mazadaran, as you can see, with a mercenary army and the armies of my vassals. Just before wrapping up the war with Mazadaran, we start supporting the freedom of Transoxiana. Oh, how delightful. And here, you need to be careful about this, I've tested it before. If you want to complete the Heart and Wound mission, the moment Transoxiana declares war on Timur becomes your ally, you won't fulfill that condition anymore, unless they fixed it in the latest patch, but I doubt it. So it's better to unclick that mission right away, and now I won't hide it, I'll probably wait and gather administrative points. We need to aim for the introduction of the fifth administrative technology to take our first ideas. And you know what? I'll even set the focus of our court on administrative actions. I need need a lot of these points, maybe indeed 10 years ago it would have been wise to establish this focus. But I'm doing it only now, when I already have a cheaper military advisor. Oh, and we should probably aim for a cheaper diplomatic advisor. But here, let's just take a level 1 advisor, and one who, you know, improves our relations to lower aggressive expansion. Because we already have quite a bit of that. The first governmental reform, and there's probably no better one than the one that increases our manpower. As a tribe, we'll have substantial Financial bonuses to it. Hey, quite cool contenders want to ascend the throne here. We'll see how they fare in the capital. I'll let them win if they go for the capital.
capital. But if they don't, I'll crush them. I have bad luck here, I just raised stability to plus one for the first time, and the game handed me a bit of a conundrum, a very promising heir. And we know that when a rebellion wins, that heir dies, tough choice, oh no, the rebels are getting closer to victory and assuming power in our country, oh no, sad news, really sad news, we got a 19 year old young heir, and the best part, for free, because the rebels won, and we got 8,000 troops, alright, I'm moving my capital to the second best province, where we can introduce the renaissance, namely to Sari. Remember, when you move your capital, you get really big bonuses to reduce the development costs of provinces. Oh, Afghanistan wants us to support their freedom, great, but this heir isn't great. Remember that with tribes, we don't have to rush to kill this heir because as long as he's not of age and our ruler dies, he'll die too, as tribes can't have underage heirs. Now let's send some small gifts to our vassals, really. Amir wants him to have good relations with Hungary. I'm doing it. Then let's sell land, reclaim land, and in a moment we'll complete 3% of course developing our capital. Well, our armies are all geared up, ready to throw down with the Timurids. But I have to wait for Transoxiana or Afghanistan to invite me to the war party against them. Doesn't seem like it's happening anytime soon. I'll grab some budget-friendly loans, introduce institutions to cheaply reintroduce our military tech. And if they don't just declare a freedom war, both Transoxiana and Afghanistan, well, I won't be twiddling my thumbs any longer, especially since I'm about to pick our first idea. So, tough luck, I'm pulling the plug on supporting the independence of Transoxiana, Afghanistan, and Sistan. Waiting isn't our best bet, we've got a two-tech advantage. But hold up, our Ajam chill time is about to expire. Alright, we'll wait on Timurids until we finish the Ajam party. Haha, <laughs> just said that, and look, a war of independence unfolds. Oh, may they hand over those provinces. Alright, first things first, I'm hitting up those smaller countries to extract them from this war ASAP. Admittedly, I'm not the general in this war, Transoxiana's got the baton, so will my opponent the maestro make a move? No clue. Fingers crossed though, the war itself won't be a heavy lift. Meanwhile, the moment has come to choose our idea. I propose any of the pairs you see right now. Note, this one's only for the masters of this game, and the war with Timurids is going swimmingly for us. No major issues. Basically, it's occupied by us and our allies. Most of Timurids' allies have already left this war, and truth be told, we could probably wrap up this war for some cash. Humiliation? Nah, not my style. And war reparations? You know what, I might just do do it. Well, it's probably better if we don't get anything in this war and enjoy the shortest peace break with Timurids, currently at 8 years. I consider the alliance with Transoxiana non-existent. I feel the same about my alliances with the rest of the countries I'm not teamed up with. Because what we were supposed to do in this war, what we did, was weaken the Timurids army. Now his smaller vassals will break free, snatch some of his territory, and in 8 years we'll hit him again and grab more for ourselves. Especially if, for instance, Fars is left standing here released right at the beginning, we attack it immediately and seize it. Well, unless I join a war with Ajam, not necessarily my cup of tea right now. Although no, scratch that, we're attacking Ajam without a doubt. True, he has technology up to level 6, and the rest of his allies have a maximum of level 4. So we attack Shivran conquer it right away. No guy, we don't need to call them immediately, but we'll take money from them. Aku Koyunlu is out, unfortunately, because that means we're calling Osman into the war. And Hormuz looks at least interesting, so maybe let Hormuz finish its war. Well, I have nibbled a bit on the white sheep, but haven't devoured the whole thing and haven't severed its ties with the Ottoman Empire. Because if I did in five years, that country would cease to exist, and I prefer to savor it slowly. I've also lost the capital, really. Meanwhile, I'm sending my diplomats to mend relations with all those Islamic countries in North India. Because they might join potential coalitions that arise after our conquests, well, my vassals are doing fine conquering Ajam now, so well that my military advisor decided to kick the bucket. Oh no, another rebellion. I often get pretender uprisings, not sure why, but this one isn't as good as our current ruler, so I'll probably get rid of him. Definitely getting rid of pretenders in Shivran. From Hormuz, I'm taking the following provinces to separate him from the Mamluk Sultanate. Honestly, Basra is crucial for us, and grabbing it here is a top priority. It's going to grab a significant chunk of trade flowing from India to us. I might be late to the Georgia conquest, quest party as Osman is already making moves. He attacked Genua, probably eyeing Georgia too. So Ajam falls, Shivaran is down, we conquer freely, get ourselves another vassal. This saves us a lot of aggressive expansion. In the coalition we might have Mamluks now, it's a bit awkward, but we probably shouldn't worry because I have a peace deal with every other country. Great, it leads us further in conquests, towards taking Basra, which I've basically done. First era development, definitely aggressive expansion. Now, for us, the most 
crucial is the Persian subcontinent. Yes, there is a subcontinent here in the game. The rest I might turn into trade companies soon. It's worthwhile to start trade companies only in provinces with trade centers, trade bonuses, and so on to boost our number of merchants. I'll focus on increasing our shares in the Persian trade and start integrating our vassals. Gotta make room for more. You know what? I just noticed that the Mamluk Sultanate annexed Syria. So I release it as my vassal and now we have claims to reconquer a vast and wealthy territory. Although I could have waited for when I annexed two of my vassals. Oh well, our country is already mighty. Third place globally and my rivals internationally are the cream of the crop. The Ottoman Empire, Moscow, France and well, I'll have to deal with that. A grand clash between the Sultanate and the Ottoman Empire unfolds and the Sultan seems to be in a slightly better position. The golden age of the black sheep has begun, making it even more effective for us to conquer the remnants of the Timurid Empire. The empire itself is in such a decline that without Mahra, it would practically have no army. Or at least I have no idea where their army is. I haven't encountered any Timurid troops, so the war seems to be one of the easy ones. Unfortunately, I haven't managed to conquer all of Timurids. Not yet. What intrigues me is that for now, the Sultanate is losing the war against the empire. I don't know why. I've seen a few battles where the Ottoman forces were getting a beating, yet they still win. But maybe let's capitalize on weakening Mamluks. And they have an alliance with Akunjulu, whom I won't attack separately. So be it. Let's reclaim some provinces for Syria and hopefully get richer. Well, the Sultanate doesn't stand a chance. We smash its army without much trouble. Literally smashing. So thanks to snagging a few provinces from the white sheep, we now have this shiny new Cassus belly. Not that I'll use it to conquer Anatolia, mind you, but we get permanent territorial claims over the whole Anatolia. Wait, wait, is Anatolia even here? Oh yeah, it is. If you're wondering why I'm running an espionage network on the Ottoman Empire all the time, remember, the more attention you pay to a country, um, here, the less aggressive expansion that country gets from your conquests. And I want the Ottoman Empire to get as little of my aggressive Okay, I'm content with peace for now, grabbing a ton of money from the Mamluks and conquering heaps of provinces for Syria. The second development from the era is of course wanting a bigger cavalry to infantry ratio, WTF. Osman declared war on Syria, not me. I got roped into some war, wow! So I'm forced to muster a larger army and head into, well, a kind of tough war. The Ottoman Empire probably won't be that terrifying. We'll win you in a battle with a hard to pronounce name. Right now, Ottoman forces outnumber mine, but we have the technological edge and they have a lousy sultan. All right, let's torch those mountain fortresses we have here, just in case if the Ottoman Empire attacks us here. Okay, let's try to grab the rest of the provinces for Syria. Let's see how we fare. Okay, we're winning another battle. Ooh, a cool commander. The fourth level of our country's development. And honestly, I'm in a dilemma. We can have cheaper cavalry, but we can also have a better chance at our generals, who will have assault capabilities. All right, we're going for cavalry. So let's go for generals too, especially since we have another battle ahead and see how we obliterate Osman in the shock phase, how quickly it drops the numbers we're pulling off. Beautiful. Choosing aristocratic ideas was a really good start. Oh, and by the way, we were also fostering art with a very cheap advisor and cheaper technology. Do I really lack five points of cavalry combat ability to complete this mission? No. Time for the last battle and squandering points. Oops. Okay, let's gain support from our fellow tribes. We'll have better horses, but thanks to that, I'm completing this mission. This reduces our cavalry costs and basically allows us to have only cavalry in our army. And look, because we have significant military traditions, our cavalry will hit even harder. Time for the demise of Osman. Oh, but we're dealing him quite the blow. I need to completely kick infantry out of my armies now. And just so you know, I've just earned the Baba Black Sheep achievement for you. Also, for the glory for the 10th time. And honestly, it's ridiculously easy to get this achievement for being the leading producer of wool. Just conquer all wool provinces in the area and have a high percentage share in your main trading hub. And we conclude the ongoing war with the Ottoman Empire. I'm separating him from the Mamluk Sultanate. I'm taking loads of money from him in war reparations. Ooh, I even have significant losses. Very significant. Well, now we're going to have some really awesome generals. With this, we can go on conquering. Oh, ho, ho, ho. And finally, I also have the funds to develop our production in my country, especially since we have a ton of excellent trade goods here. The next war should be a walk in the park for us. Why? Because I'm forging an alliance with Poland and Austria. Time to embark on the ultimate Timurid conquest, as they're practically a non-issue at this point. Colonialism, finally to celebrate, 
let's wrap up the Georgian matter and witness how dirt cheap it is to annex newly conquered provinces into our empire. I mean, kingdom, for now. And the black sheep has to start building its fleet. I reckon we'll start with five heavy ships for those seas. It's time to boost our country's stability. Okay, I need to focus on developing Baghdad to proceed with our missions towards the Mamluk conquest. And believe it or not, I have to develop that province to a tax level of 10. All right, I'll wait a bit at the end of this war with Georgia. Okay, since I'm already mumbling, let's attack Transoxiana. We'll keep poking around here, so let's also hit Hormuz in the meantime because our fleet is ready. And let's grab Tabas. Let's corner Transoxiana's army. I wonder how our battle here will go. And it seems to be going splendidly. Good lord, this cavalry is mighty. Almost like playing Polish Hussars, but here it's just my cavalry charging into the genuine army. Hopefully, this wraps up our war, really. Guess who lost their capital again and... No, it's not ours. Ha ha, opponent. That's why I prefer having the capital in this province, but how? What do they want to conquer? What does Osman want to conquer? Can I sharpen a blade with the Ottoman Empire? Unfortunately not. Can I guarantee the Mamluk Empire? Also no. Well then, it's war. We'll conquer a significant chunk of Hormuz, leading us to dominance in the Hormuz region. This allows us to build ships faster and we get claims to the pirate coast, whatever that is. Hey, and look, I'm building five heavy ships in Basra. Oh my god, we're wrecking the Timurid's legacy, just without wrecking the Timurid's legacy. Because it turns out that dynasty is still in Afghanistan. Well, thanks to completing this mission, we get a lot more territorial claims. This will be at least an interesting war. On our side, Poland and Austria will be shooting, and on the opposite side, France will be fighting. And we're attacking the Ottoman Empire. Our goal is to conquer, well, not Aleppo, Sham. Because it reminds me of food. For now, the invasion from the Balkans is going splendidly. Wow, Hussars under Constantinople, just like I'd play it. We've gained many provinces for Syria, so we can continue attacking towards Constantinople to link up with our allies, who probably took a beating under Constantinople, as they're definitely taking one here under Kosovo. Guess what? I recommend Poland attack Paris. Beautiful, the Mamluks are having a tough time for now. I'm loving it. Meanwhile, my black sheep forces are closing in on Constantinople. I know, we won't cross that stream. No chance, because we lack a fleet, unless the Mamluks oust the Ottoman fleet, but I highly doubt it. The Ottoman army is somewhere far, so I'm splitting my forces to quickly capture the remaining forts in the area. Austria, your sacrifice won't be forgotten. Maybe it's funny, but I'm experiencing a total blackout. How did you do a carpet siege? What key shortcuts were used? Because I totally forgot how it's done. D and V, right? And now V is searching for me, so V. Alright, I remembered. Thanks for your help, my dear viewers. You were surprisingly helpful. We're fleeing. We're fleeing. The Ottoman forces are closing in. And and there are really a lot of them, so we need to escape to our fortress and we'll be facing them soon. I can't believe it, they're losing, they're really losing, no. All right, my forces have arrived, arrived on the other side of the stream, and we're wrecking the Ottomans, literally annihilating them. As you can see, I have only cavalry in my army, I might have a tad too few cannons. Okay, and off we go, we need to capture the passage. Constantinople must fall unless they divide their forces. Yes, they've split their forces, it's just a beautiful thing, innocence, we simply have have such strong cavalry, not that we need to brag about it. Beautiful, that moment when you want to conquer Constantinople but don't have infantry in your army, no kidding. But we quickly took Constantinople, onward, battle on the other side, splendid. And the Ottomans have disadvantages during this battle. Let's see if my army will trek all the way to Paris. Unfortunately, the Austrians have already left this war, taking the third diplomatic idea, because I plan to conquer a lot, really a lot. The Black Sheep Inn under Paris, France is burning, nothing's changed here though. Oh well, France is paying us tribute. And okay, we're reclaiming the rest of the provinces, taking a lot of money from the Ottoman Empire, because it just pays off. Look at the small losses compared to my opponent. Now, let's also put him in debt, revealing all the forts. Hey, what's the Mamluk Sultanate doing here? So we've crushed the Mamluks, we've defeated the Ottoman Empire, although we're still missing 14 provinces. We'll snatch those in the next war, for sure. Finally moving my capital to this province. I've had enough of it being captured all the time. Now let's find find a way to unravel a few truly potent monuments we have for conversion. See, versus heretics versus everyone else. Some monuments are robust, some specifically for Copts. Alright, we know it's for the Zoro religion. Here, we must accept Persian culture, and I'll likely do that. Ooh, this monument will be super important for trade. Usually, I'd keep such an heir, but we need one with five administrative points. Let's annex some of my minor vassals to make the map prettier. Why not? Alright, the reason I wasn't waging wars has just been addressed. We got another cheaper advisor. Very cool. So it's time to kick off the conquests. This is Makra. Yay. All right. But how on earth? Egypt. How on earth did he lose this war? No way. Oh. 
we're going to have an increased chance now. This is a very powerful mission to get well connected, meaning cheap advisors by 20%. It's one of the mightiest modifiers for rulers. Let's see what event this is. Abur Bakhtirani played a crucial role in the intellectual and cultural spheres of the kingdoms of Akunjuru and Kuara Kunjuru, the white black sheep, which I forgot I was supposed to read that way. Immersed in libraries and academies, Abur Bakhtirani gained a profound understanding of various disciplines. Now we have the opportunity to hire a very inexpensive expensive, excellent advisor, ideally for improving relations with other countries. In total, we expanded Tabriz, our former capital, and now it would even be a good place to develop provinces. Meanwhile, we've become an empire. I'll check to make sure it doesn't block any missions. In total, this might block a certain mission because we'll have to change our main culture to Turkish-Iranian. You know what? I won't create an empire. Although, no, sorry, here, we'll simply get an acceptable Turkish culture. Nothing bad should happen, I guess. And yet, it changed. In the meantime, while waiting to complete a few few more missions and get through my peace period with the Ottoman Empire. I attack Afghanistan. The day has come when the black sheep invaded the Ottoman Empire along with their allies. Our goal will be to capture Adana as it's close on the list. Oh, this time it should be much easier. I strike directly at the fortress. As you can see, I'm not too concerned that I now have a bit too much cavalry in my armies. I'll let you in on a secret. We'll have 100% anyway at some point. I can't believe it. Ottoman troops on Lithuanian steppes, can you? Now, I'm gathering money, mainly so that when I reach each diplomatic technology 11, I can build our manufactories. They're too important not to build. I can build them already, but I'm silly. Let's roll with the manufactories. See how many I can build, a whole six. But I'm taking loans from the burgers to start building them as soon as possible and then we'll repay. Wow, look. Austrian forces defeated the Ottoman army. Unbelievable. I'm hunting down that Ottoman army. Yes, here they are. Oh, a grand battle. I'm not hitting as hard now because I've run out of battle modifiers. Now it's time for the Hussars. Herder under Constantinople. Caught the fleeing Ottoman army and a beautiful stag wife. Practically all of Anatolia under our occupation and the Balkans are now a matter for Austria and Poland. Now we're taking a really large chunk of land from the Ottoman Empire. Wow, I might have overdone it. Let's take some development, if possible, to our new capital. Yes, maybe we can do without rebellions. Building some observatory, what does it give us? Wow, we'll get a university. Now the comet won't give us any negatives. You guys have no idea how much I could have used that much, much earlier, the fate of Trebizond. After a long siege and fierce resistance from the residents of Trebizond, the last fortress of the Greek Trebizond Empire finally came under our control. We rebound from the Turkish Empire. Honestly, let's take the acceptable Pontic culture. Why not? The alternative is not very pleasant. You're handing us some mega bonuses. And behold, since we meet an extra condition, there's a chance some of our wool provinces will magically transform into silk ones. Now, let's check how many of these provinces will make the leap to Silkville. Hello, but I want this to be highlighted. Uh, nothing? Oh no, some things have indeed changed. Simultaneously, we've accomplished a mission for the crown of the empire because in the meantime, I beefed up Tabriz to a whopping 43 development levels. Now it's a pearl in our crown. Speaking of our crown, it's time to conquer a few provinces from Transoxy that we need. The first development of the era, and here we are, knee deep in religious wars. I'll be conquering, conquering, and conquering again, unless we fancy a change in Persia. But worry not, we fixed that after I recorded the episode. Now, a grand event unfolds. Additionally, we haven't lost any battles to the Ottoman Empire until this point. Oh, that many requirements, the era of the black sheep has dawned, basically giving us a second golden age to play with. We just need to meet three requirements, especially since we've just inherited the legacy of the Seljuks. The new history of the land of Iran witnessed the rise and fall of many mighty empires. Among them, the Seljuk dynasty shone like a beacon of greatness, ruling wisely and courageously. Centuries later, fate smiled upon us, offering a chance to reclaim the legacy of our esteemed predecessors and unite the divided lands of Iran under our rule. And now we have a choice. Either develop our provinces, setting the construction wheels in motion for a very, very long time, 20 years to be exact, or swiftly convert and stabilize this region. Honestly, I'm going all in on developing our provinces. Simultaneously, we're ticking off the Turkish-Persian architecture mission, granting us the privilege of a grand overhaul of Iraq. Basically, Iran. You've seen this in action in the previous campaign when I played as Persia. Basically, every province gets a 50% discount on development costs or some other number. Here you have the great works of Iran, and after a bit of progress, we can start collecting development costs again within my cultural group, minus 5%. And when I hit a stability of plus three, which I already have, we carry out the Turkmen personification. At the end of the road, we've got three missions left to increase control in the Hormuz region, import better cannons from Western countries, and most importantly, finally do what we should have done ages ago, 
Grab those modifiers for our cavalry, so our army becomes an unstoppable force. In due course, we'll be able to reform, maybe into a monarchy, allowing us to create the Persian nation. And as we all know, Persia has incredible bonuses during this period for developing its own provinces. A moment ago, I also snagged a bunch of other bonuses for developing provinces, making it incredibly cost-effective. Persia itself would lead us toward conquering India and further the Ottoman Empire. And if you want to see another country excelling in both conquest and development, check out my campaign with Egypt, turning the Arabian sands literally into gold.